So music was kind of an accident for me as far as being a, a career. When I was in high school, there was a band that formed around a song that I'd written, and I always thought that I would work my way through college playing in this band. Well, 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 oh, Cassandra, you make my temperature rise, which I thought was a really hot light. Like a summer with a thousand Julys, a thousand Julys. <laughs> so that's that's how this started with a song. In '65, I joined a band called Don and the Good Times, and we wore top hats and tails, and we did have a good time. We just made people smile. That was our chore. And then at one point, I joined Ballroom and the Raiders and never really came back to working a regular job. In the Raiders, you played a half hour and everyone loved you. You couldn't do anything wrong. So you go on stage and, you know, screaming and yelling and I love you and all that. As far as television, that was fun. We started filming at 7.30 in the morning and Dick Clark would put us in a field and they said, okay, Raiders, be funny. And we lip synced to some song that we'd recorded a few weeks before. You know, Paul Revere and the Raiders have done a lot of strange things, a lot of funny, but this, I think, is one of the uh, most unusual, <laughs> one of the funniest. It involves nothing but their music, Jim Valley, Harpo, and a couple of big turntables. As far as the touring, you know, I wanted to tour. I mean, down the good times, we were basically in the Northwest, so all of a sudden, you're in the Raiders and you're flying across to Orlando, Florida. The only rehearsal we had was 40 minutes before our first concert in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I knew the songs, I kind of knew the steps. I'd watch them in performance, and so I was like, send me in, coach, I'm ready. And that first concert, as we were playing Louie Louie, the band went, the kid's okay, he's gonna be all right. Playing for kids was just a magic way for me to earn a living. 1966, 67, I lived in Laurel Canyon and became friends with some of the mamas and papas and Jackson Brown and Stephen Stills. And so it was, we knew that the world was changing because of us, sort of. We had that, you know, universal love going on. My work with kids started because of a need for friendship in a school in Tacoma. Could you write a song that would help us learn to get along? And I composed a song called Rainbow Planet. And that became kind of the essence of my workshop that I did in schools. Sometimes I go to schools for a day, sometimes I go there for a week. I'll do like three, four sessions a day. And it's basically K through five, K through six. And that became my career for the next 30 years. Starting first of all in the Northwest area in around Puget Sound and then the state and then the country through a, a program called Math Their Way, which I did a workshop in Santa Cruz and all these teachers and principals from different parts of the U.S. said, we want you at our school. So that happened for like maybe five years going around the U.S. And then I got a letter from Rio de Janeiro saying, would you ever consider coming this far? And so that started international schools for me. And so I've maybe been to like 30 different countries. And that's been a fabulous part of working with kids, of seeing those cultures and seeing that kids all over the world all want to make this a beautiful planet and make friendship so for years, I was kind of looking around at what I do 
with kids about what my mission statement would be. And at one point, a teacher just came out and said, you know, your mission statement should be you create a community of happy learners who see each other's value. So this band that I'm with now, the roots of it started at a memorial for a, a, a rock and roll friend of mine that was in a group called the Whalers from Tacoma. And I was asked if I would sing a couple songs at his memorial. So a friend of mine, Dan Wilson from a guitar store here in Gig Harp said, well, there's a great bass player and Jamie, who you know, who's a drummer, said they'd, they'd love to do it. So we got together and learned three songs and played this event and they said, we'd like to keep playing with you. You know, just, just the three of us. So we did, we practiced in Jamie, the drummer's uh, laundry room, and we were just having a great time. And, and then at one point, we went up to see a club, local coffee club here, and there was this guy named Russ Salton. And he was up there and talking and playing and singing. I went to Jamie and said, that guy, that guy would be great with us, what do you think? So I went and talked to Russ, and twisted his arm and offered him lots of money and he finally said okay. So then there were four of us and Russ was an important addition because he not only had a great place to practice, we got out of the laundry room, but he uh, arranged and sang and we, you know, at that point we said, this is great. So, and all of them, you know, put, put in 100%. So it's been about two years almost since we started and it's only gotten better. And this, this last concert we did was like the cat's meow. I got a brand new baby and I feel so good. She's gonna love me better than I thought she would. I'm on my way to her house and I'm plumb out of breath. And when I see her tonight, I'm gonna squeeze her to death. Draw death, pretty little death. Draw death, never makes me fret. Draw death. So I have a friend, his name's John Jacob. He's an engineer. When he knew that I, I was having a band, he said, Jim, I'd like to come up and video you, your band when you, when you play someplace. So we had lots of meetings about what we had to do and you know this and that and who, who was going to be served, how many people would he invite. And then Russ came up with uh, some video guy. He came on board and that meant that there were going to be five cameras or however many cameras. It became just you know an, an event. We probably had close to 100 people there. And of course, they were all friends and loved us. And it was hard to, you know, screw up. And uh, it was a magic night. And it was all on film and recorded. And so it's something that I'll have for the rest of my life. As I walk down this road, mile after mile, I find another rock down inside my shoe, can I rest you for a while? Natural Man has been just one of the songs that I've sung at parties by myself on a piano, that you just kind of get to rip it up and has been kind of a song about, you know, truth building up inside you and kind of let it out, you know, rip down the walls, I want to turn this world around, and that song has always been, been fun. And I got to record it on an album in 1990, but these songs, like I'm doing with the band, are the first time I've really performed them. Building up inside you, sits a long time, a long time. Got to let it out, got to, got to ease my mind I can sing and dance and swing this world around Walls come tumbling down and whoa Well, my influence is, you know, for sure our, our music and authors. I always have a book and books sometimes influence a song or give an inspiration to a song. Like for instance, Cowgirls from Tom Robbins, even Cowgirls Get the Blues. Street 
Dance. Um, one of my favorite songs because it, it's, uh, it actually tells a story, a true story. And I had gone to Europe in 77 with a dancer and we performed on streets. But the places where that happened, like Pike Place Market in, in Seattle would be an example of a place like that. First time we made money was in the subways of Paris. We blew it all on one French dinner, Vander slice of me. Street dance, we sing and dance for you. Street dance, gather around this crowded avenue. Street dance, we sing and dance for you. I have a song called Chickens that I wrote in maybe the mid-70s, and I lived on a, a little farm, and we did have chickens, and my wife would say, Harpo, go feed the chickens, you know? And so at one point, this song developed about, what it was kind of, I, I call it a mythological autobiographical song. So I say, life became a river, spilled into the sea, ocean too deep to handle for me, and it kind of goes on, now I'm living on a farm, trying to do no one, no harm. So there's a little message there, again, on that. You're trying to, to live a good life and not to be a, a jerk. Life became a river spilled into the sea, ocean too deep to handle for me. I found myself a mermaid, swam to the shore. She laid me on the beach, I said, I can't take no more, no how, no way. Then I climbed up to the high mountain Thought I would never, ever, ever come down Tripped, might have stumbled And I turned into a sad old ragged clown Now I'm living on a farm Trying to do no one, no harm I got three kids by the same lady And sometimes I I'm going crazy Harpo, won't you feed the chickens again? Come on, chickens So for years, I've, I've always thought that my music or my life was about celebrating creativity and imagination and the creative child in all of us, because I believe we all have creativity, and if we just let it out, it'll be there. <laughs>